This is the Quantum Biology Podcast, where we break down the practical health applications of this emerging science, starting with healthy light habits and going wherever the quantum superhighway takes us. In this episode, quantum health coach Nathan Walls interviews citizen researcher Peter Bort, who discovered quantum health principles and used them to take his health from fine to fantastic. As he moved from his 50s to his 60s, Peter found he was feeling better than he ever had in his entire life. In this interview, he and Nathan break down exactly what he did and why. From sunrises to grounding shoes to mindset, this episode covers all the foundational quantum health strategies that combine to create truly optimal health. All right. Hello. Welcome, everyone. My name is Nathan Walls, and this is my good friend, Peter Bort. And I'm a quantum health coach. And Peter is a, a student of chronobiology. Is that correct? It, that is. And I don't really have much of a science background. Um, I work in the legal field, and I've had a real curiosity and involvement in spiritual practices for many decades. Yeah. So we're just, we're going to discuss. Peter's journey because Peter has been on a, a health spiritual journey for many, many years, maybe as long as I've, I've been alive. And, you know, what's interesting is every time I see Peter, he looks a little bit younger. And when I first met him, I thought he was about 15 years younger than he was. But when I met Peter, like I said, he had been doing a whole lot working on his health. And Peter discovered quantum health, quantum biology. He got very intrigued with it. And I got lucky enough to be able to work with Peter to, to help him on his journey. So we really just want to share Peter's journey. And I'll probably share a little bit about me, too. And hopefully you can learn some ideas that you can apply to your own health, your own journey, whatever that is. And uh, it's great that we can all learn from each other and just continue to get our own selves to a higher level. So. Peter, do you want to kind of share a little bit about what first intrigued you about quantum health and kind of what that journey looked like? So I was um, uh, heading toward age 60. Today, I'm 64 when this was recorded. And um, happy birthday. Yeah, right. And um, so I was looking for something different. I knew that I knew that the allopathic functional stuff I was doing was not serving me because I had an extra 35 pounds of weight. Um, I, I was experiencing brain fog. I was uh, not um, on my game with my uh, work. And um, I had some really kind of nagging uh, a bad knee and back pain. I had herniated discs that weren't healing up all the way and this neck pain that I'd had since a teenager. So I, I had a lot of nagging stuff, but I wasn't on any pharma or diagnosed with any chronic thing, except maybe, you know, arthritis here and there. So um, I knew there was something better. And, you know, intuition is sometimes downplayed, but intuition is a connection right into the, the wisdom source. And my intuition saw, saw the Jack Cruz stuff and just went whoop, whoop, whoop. And I knew that there was something there for me. What I didn't have was a method. And so I stumbled around for a while trying to make sense out of random Facebook posts and blog posts. And then I realized I need somebody like Nathan. I need a coach. And so in a matter of uh, whatever it was, 12 weeks, I was able to implement what I call a foundation of this paradigm of health. So um, I, does that answer your question? Yeah, so it, it's, it's been a couple of years since we've worked together. So yes. I don't remember exactly what you were doing before we got started, but I do recall just when we first spoke, I was really impressed with all the great things you were doing. To really support yes. your health and, and your well-being. So, do you want to talk about what were some of the things you were doing before quantum health, and then what were some of the changes you made along the way? So, uh, in terms of mindfulness meditation, I've been doing that um, consistently 
since 1985. Uh, and I've been working with energy uh, medicine people and acupuncture and Feldenkrais, you know, method. What, what's that? Feldenkrais? Fel Feldenkrais, yeah. F-E-L-D-E-N-K-R-A-I-S. Okay. Um, it's a movement uh, thing. And I had all kinds of body work. And um, so that that was my foundation. Now, Nathan is not just dealing with the body. When he's coaching somebody, he knows there's a huge mind-body uh, nexus. And so one of the things he works with people on is holding a positive focus. So that's called manifesting. It's called a lot of different things. But really what it comes down to is showing up for myself, showing up with self-honoring and being able to envision positive, envision the outcomes that I want. So I had fortunately had many years experience with that kind of technology. So I think Nathan is referring in part to, I presented not in a needful way around my, my positive outlook. I had the positive outlook. I knew there was a, a good direction to go forward working with Nathan. And sure enough, really good um, combination. Okay. Good. So, so you started out, you had a very positive mindset. You were doing a lot of mindfulness meditation for many, many years, energy, energy work. And, and what did your diet look like at that time? It was kind of the standard functional medicine. You know, um, I, I was not at all aware of, of time related eating and, and intermittent fasting. I was not at all aware of the importance of DHA. Uh, eating seafood. I knew about good water. Um, and I ate way too many carbs at that time. I had no, I didn't know about deuterium. I don't, I don't think I'd even heard the word outside of, uh, you know, reading about Einstein uh, working on the atomic bomb or something. Yeah. Uh, so, so I, I was kind of fumbling around with my diet here. Here's one thing though. I was not a vegan or a vegetarian. So at least there was vital energy coming into my body somehow. Okay. Okay. And then what did your physical activity look like? Uh, the problem was I had been a big hiker and um, loved to do things outdoors that involved a little bit of endurance. And I just couldn't do it anymore. Um, my my uh, muscular skeletal stuff was was really nagging. Uh, so um, that was very discouraging. So just like I said about holding a positive focus, you know, the, the brain fog that was starting to creep in and the kind of disappointment with my physicality, those were like, like the dogs baying, you know, for me on, on the uh, outskirts of my consciousness, you know, to pull me down. But, um, you know, obviously I had a positive focus because I recognized the, the the quantum biology paradigm and I knew enough to get a coach. Yeah, yeah, good for you. And I, I could totally relate to that because I remember like mentally and I had the mindset to like always want to push myself physically, but I got to a point where my body just wasn't able to keep up with what I mentally wanted to do. And yeah, it gets very frustrating. It gets very discouraging. And the important thing is, well, let's do something about it, right? This is the challenge. You know, I have this awareness, you know, physically and not where I want to be. So I've got to make some changes because doing like the standard stuff of, of eating somewhat well and, and exercising, sometimes that doesn't cut it. So what were some of the changes you started to make that really align with quantum health, quantum biology? Yeah, so so you really gave me a great protocol, um, and uh, you know I just wanted to start off by saying if somebody watching this is um, dealing with a massive health crisis that threatens your your life, um, I would I would encourage you to do more than what I'm about to say. Here I am in the Northeast. Um, I don't live like right in a city. I don't have cell towers all around me. Um, so I was I was moderately healthy with some nagging stuff. So 
what we did was morning sun need to be, need to have skin and eyes in the game morning sun uh good water i was doing that um add seafood to my diet so i had never had any interest in oysters and all of a sudden i realized i feel good after i eat oyster hmm. you know there's something to this with the oysters and i i didn't eat shrimp i thought they were you know dirty creatures and so i started <laughs> eating eating good shrimp and um eating more um pelagic fish than i had before um and so that's that's on the diet side I, um there's a whole thing with leptin sensitivity and a whole protocol around leptin sensitivity. And that's what allows the weight to go away without some huge increase in expended calories or huge decrease in the intake of food calories. So I could eat just as much. I was just eating different. I was eating different times and I was eating different food. And all of a sudden, boom. There goes the 35 pounds I didn't need. And all of the great, um, you know, byproducts of losing that, that extra weight. So then also grounding is hugely important. Um, either bare feet on some nice um, grass, beach sand, you know, that's the best. Um, being in bodies of water is hugely grounding and hugely protective around non-native EMFs. Um, and then, okay, so today I wake up and it's six degrees out. Um, does that mean I can't ground because my bare feet are going to stick you know, <laughs> to the icy ground? That's not the, that's not the problem. All I do is put on my grounding shoes, right? So put on my grounding shoes, go for my five mile walk in nature. And, uh, I've taken in a ton of electrons and I, I just want to put in one one perspective here when i look at my health journey it was about realizing that it's all about the free electrons it's all about firing up the batteries the little batteries in my cells it's all about my you know my iphone has has gotten really weak on battery plugging it back in plugging it into the sun plugging it into the grounding and um and having good breathing practices which is which is something that nathan uh is a good coach on uh because that's that vital energy coming in you know um through what we take in as as that oxygen so grounding the, the leptin sensitivity is huge um light signaling which is of course the morning the first morning sun it's also the rise of uva um, which is uh, in the solar spectrum. Really important to be out, you know, as early as possible for when UVA rises because it's setting everything beautifully, all the internal clocks. Um, and then my body's a solar panel. So I am a liquid crystal, right? The way we're, we're comprised as human beings, we are liquid crystals. I'm a liquid crystal solar panel. So I am meant to have skin in the game. And so we were able to work together. And I went from um, someone who has a Fitzpatrick two on the dermatologist uh, scale, which means pretty light skin. Zero would be albino, right? One would be, you know, uh, Northern Irish skin like my wife. Um, but I can go in um, tropical sun and not burn because wow. I built a solar callus. Yeah. So the solar callus is just a massively important thing, the solar panel. Um, and then seeing sunsets. Um, I've always loved sunsets. Uh, there's just something out of this world about, you know, seeing all the colors in the sunset. And then staying away from what we call artificial light at night, Allen, staying away from, from Allen because it dysregulates the chronobiology, um, you know, so then, then there's good EMF, non-native EMF hygiene, um, in the house and particularly the bedroom. Um, and that's a whole separate piece, but bottom line folks, you don't want your, uh, devices, your, um, cell phones, iPads, uh, laptops, um, cordless phones, 
uh, clock radios. You just don't want that stuff in your bedroom. Uh, and you want to do a little detective work. Is there a smart meter on right outside the wall where I lay my head on the inside of the wall? That's not a good recipe. Um, is my Wi-Fi router still on when I'm sleeping? Because all I got to do is plug it into a little timer that costs 15 bucks on Amazon, and it automatically shuts off my router when, during my sleep hours. So I'm not assaulting myself um, with that um, electromagnetic field. Uh, so good EMF hygiene, you got to do some detective work. This is, there's no doubt that, you know, this requires some learning. It's a lifelong learning. You know, this, this paradigm of health is a lifelong learning. It's not just take a pill and, you know, carry on. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so important. I'm glad you brought that up, Peter. And it's, it's really creating a lifestyle of just, that's how you live your life. And like a lot of great analogies you shared there, Peter, like with the iPhone running down. And we all know when, when our own internal batteries are low and, you know, anybody that's had a phone for a long time, you know, after a while, the battery loses its capacity to hold a charge. And when we don't take good care of ourselves, our body does the same thing. And even if you get a really good night's sleep and take very good care of yourself, if you've lost your capacity to hold a charge, you might wake up feeling good, but then a couple hours into your day, you're starting to drag already. So, you know, I love all the things you shared, Peter, for the most part, very low tech, very simple, a lot of things reconnecting with nature, making a few shifts and stuff you normally do like eating. So just improving the timing of, of when you eat, um, getting out for sunrise, getting out for sunset, you know, the one kind of more high tech thing, I guess, is investing in a meter. So you have kind of eyes and ears for these, you know, Peter mentioned a couple of times, non-native EMF, which is man-made EMF from our, our routers and Wi-Fi and the wires running through the walls in our house. But when you have, most of us can't see, feel, or, or smell these EMFs, electromagnetic fields, but they create inflammation in the body. They rob us, rob us of, of energy. And by just getting one of these meters, you can now kind of see where you're getting these different sources that are causing inflammation. And when you have inflammation, your body's not making energy. So. Yeah. And movement. Movement's another huge one. So Nathan wanted me to, to add some HIIT, uh, high intensity interval training um, into my um, protocol. Uh, so any kind of movement. So for me, um, a lot of mornings have me doing a five mile walk in nature. Um, and uh, it's just unbelievable, the good chemicals that are being made in my, my body at that time, natural pharmaceutical. I just, I feel like the king of the world, you know, when I, when I come in from a walk like that. Um, and then the, the more intense um, you know, weight training, strength training, uh, HIIT, uh, doing that um, late afternoon, uh, you know, the beginning of the evening. You know, I, I you know, do this before uh, my, my last meal of the day. Um, that's a great time in terms of chronobiology to do that stuff. Um, so then another piece that has been amazing for me in all of this, um, was um, taking a course in spiritual psychology through the University of Santa Monica, hmm. in California. Uh, it's a fully Zoom platform now. And um, I worked through and healed so many things on the, you know, kind of spiritual, emotional nexus of life um, that, uh, I just feel like a, a new person from having done that program. Okay. So um, spiritual psychology, do you want to share a little bit about like what that course looks like? Like what yeah, are you learning about so what, I, what, like, how do you put it to practice too? I, so the overall perspective is earth is a school and every soul comes in with its own individual curriculum. So ultimately 
you can have reference points outside of yourself, but ultimately we're living from the inside out. So mm. I'm, I'm not going to live my life based on somebody else's opinion, no matter how authoritative they are. I'm going to go with my inner wisdom. So it's a, it's a technology that creates an awakening of that inner wisdom. And so, for example, one of the things we say is how I relate to the issue is the issue. So, yeah, okay. you know, somebody stole my parking place. Okay. What's going on inside of my consciousness right now? Am I angry? Am I, you know, my heart rate racing? Am I tensing up? Um, am I putting out a lot of negative vibes out into the universe? Because remember, it all comes back. Everything's all connected. Uh, so that kind of approach um, to gaining more dominion over um, how I'm using my energy. Yeah. Because um, okay. right? so. we, we've talked about how to source better energy just from our environment. And we've talked about how to protect ourselves from some, some bad influences, the, the EMFs we talked about, but we didn't talk about how to connect to a bigger field of energy and how to um, expand into kind of the, the gift that I was given in this curriculum. What, you know, what's, what's there to be fulfilled as a life purpose? And I, I truly feel at this point in my life, more connected in terms of a life purpose than ever before. And so this piece we're talking about on the physical material level of nutrition and connecting to, to our environment, all that, that's a, just a small piece right. uh, of the puzzle for me, but it, but it hugely impactful. You, you know, it's a good foundation to start with. You know, if you had to start with one thing, how about just, having more more free electrons flowing in your body. How about having your body work at its optimum? Uh, that's a good place to start, I think. Yeah, yeah, 100 percent. And yeah, it, it, you know it's so interesting how, how we, we come into this this world. We all have our own things to work on. We're completely unaware of it when we're born and as we're growing up, a lot of us never think to stop and ask, what am I meant to learn in this life? Right. And so it sounds like in this course, you're really just observing how you re react or respond to different situations. And I guess if it triggers you, that's something you really want to pay attention to and just getting curious and asking like, why did this event trigger me? And being grateful for the challenges and, Having having that attitude of gratitude um, approach to to the curriculum and saying, okay, so you know, I got bullied when I was in school, but apparently I chose that curriculum. It was not something randomly assigned to me by by you know the fickle finger of fate. I really chose that. And if if my one of my parents or both of my parents had huge issues of some kind, I chose them. They're the parents I chose. And so I do have a tremendous gratitude for both my parents who are deceased. And um, I, I feel like it's, it's, a, it's a good kind of reset of, of how I see um, the events of my life flowing to me. Yeah, it is a good way of looking at things. So, you know, I want to repeat this, Peter. You know, what I love about pretty much everything you shared, it's it's very approachable, very doable for most people. It's nothing too complicated. It's nothing too complex. And it's just really a lot of what you've shared is really it's reconnecting with nature. It's reconnecting with our our souls, our, our true selves. So since you started the journey, like what are some other changes that you've made so we've kind of talked about some some physical things that you've done mental and spiritual have there been any other things you've added over the past couple of years there have but i, I want to also address let's say that someone experienced trauma in childhood and because of the trauma 
they go into hypervigilance mode during sleep hours because that's when they were molested, say, when they were a kid. So there's yeah. also, you know, work that people um, sometimes need to do apart from the protocol we just talked about. Like it may be necessary to work with a trauma professional to be able to get a better balance of the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system, you know, in those hours when they're, they should be sleeping, but they're being hypervigilant instead of that. And the same thing would apply, um, let's say that I'm a shift worker, because I was a shift worker for a while in my 20s. Um, and I know that was the least connected to my beingness that I've ever been in this life. Okay. I was, I was so far from my heart and myself when I was a shift worker, working the graveyard shift. Um, so in terms of a self-honoring behavior for someone, if, if you're, you're watching this, you're currently a shift worker, just take a really deep look at how could I make my life such that I don't have to do the shift work? What, what would I have to do and choose so that I can self-honor, so that I can truly choose who I am um, in this situation? But um, the stuff that, the, the, I'll just call these extras, uh, Nathan, although I, I would say when we first started working together, Nathan encouraged me to try something called cold thermogenesis or cold plunges or cold showers. Oh, yeah. And I was like, no, I'm not doing that. I don't need that. And then he said, well, you know, and he didn't say it right away. Let me sit with that a while. And then he said, you know, you're, you know, you're 60 something years old. Your testosterone has been going down. Okay. And, um, your, um, you know, your dopamine might not be exactly where you want it to be, say, or your, um, your other good neurochemicals. This works. This actually improves all that. It, it makes your testosterone go up. It improves your inner chemistry, your inner pharmacy. Why not give it a try? And so I said, you know what? You, you, you put the carrot out there for me. Yes, I will give it a try. And so the cold plunges are massively wonderful. Now, are any of us designed with a natural taste for cold plunging? Unless we're like a wal walrus or something? No, 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 no. It's not initially comfortable to get into my huge tub, um, you know, that's been chilled down between 50 and 60 degrees, the water. That's not comfortable. And then the initial going in is like, ah, uh, you know. Uh, however, the benefits are unbelievable. Um, and so my testosterone did go back up. The other thing that we packed in with the protocol, Nathan, is you had me get a very good uh, red light panel. And um, I use the red light panel. So arthritic knee, that gets the light panel. Uh, the boys down below, they get the light panel. You know, it's, uh, it's all about, um, you know, using everything for upliftment, learning and growth. And I, I think a, a red light panel is a great addition. If I had known about red light panels when I was in my uh, late 20s, early 30s, I would have used a red light panel. Oh, here. Me too, believe it. And I think I'd probably <laughs> still have a full head of hair because that's, you know, anecdotally, that's what uh, I'm seeing uh, with that, that population. Uh, so acupuncture has been a steady thing for me. For a number of years, I think it's a huge, if you have a good acupuncturist who does the five element method, I think it's absolutely wonderful for the what, body. What's that? What's the five element method? You can do traditional uh, Chinese medicine, which is called TCM. Mm -hmm. TCM is the purely allopathic version to my understanding where we have to find out what's wrong and we have to fix it. And the five element um, is more uh holistic and more let's just get everything really nicely tuned up um so um i i've been fortunate to work with a medical intuitive who has kind of a functional approach um for for about three decades but i'll tell you what when i get um bitten by a tick 
and I think maybe I've got Lyme or, or maybe it's Rocky Mountain spotted fever or whatever, he knows what it is. And he goes in and he says, oh, no, you don't have, you didn't get Lyme's from it. You got, you know, you got this other weird uh, disease from Colorado or whatever. And here's. here's this is a medical around. intuitive, you said? Yeah. That picked this and up? Here's, yeah. Oh, wow. And here's the. Here's the homeopathic that'll clear it out. Okay. You know, so, um, or, you know, I had uh, kind of arthri arthritic symptoms in one of my uh, joints and he realized it was um, something that could, again, be dealt with with a homeopathic and boom, just, just cleared it out. Um, and it was nice to have him in my corner when there was so little known about COVID. And he was he was definitely part of my arsenal of I'm not afraid of this thing. You know, yeah. once once I understood, I spent about two weeks. Let's face it, the whole planet was on under kind of a cloud of fear, you know, because we're all connected. You know, you, you could say, well, no, it didn't affect me. But you were you're connected. You were affected by it, um, no matter how bold you speak about it today. Um, and I'm not saying this to you personally, Nathan, I'm just saying this to, you know, yeah. um, cause there are people that say, you know, that's not even a disease and I'm like, okay, whatever. So the other thing that's been hugely helpful to me is something called myofascial release as developed by, um, a practitioner named John F. Barnes. Mm -hmm. And he knew about the fascia and taught about how to work with the fascia 50 years ago. I mean, he was way, way, way ahead of his time. He's since trained over 100,000 professionals in how to do it. And it is amazing how it has freed up movement in my body. Um, so when I walk around, people think I'm a, you know, late 30s, early 40s in terms of my gait and how I have proprioception. Um, you know, it's no accident. It's it's the myofascial release. It's the Feldenkrais, which is an awareness through movement uh, technique. The other thing that really helped get me past um, decades of dysfunction in my one knee was uh, I got a little extra boost with something called plasma rich platelets. Okay. So you know, my doc took some blood out, put it in a centrifuge. It creates this. It's probably like exclusion zone structure type right that yeah. is giving me in concentrated form that gets injected at the spots that need it and that and a red light panel um and a lot of positive focus and meditation all that just uh as we stand here today the knee is very happy to go on a five mile walk or do squats or whatever yeah that's great you know, i have to admire your dedication peter getting out you know, here on the East Coast, we've got sub-zero temperatures, and Peter still got out there, did his five miles this morning, and uh, I mean, that's that's the dedication, like just making that a part of your lifestyle. That's just how Peter lives his life. He's not Nathan, doing that wasn't hard. five miles. That's part of his life. That wasn't hard, honestly. I didn't feel cold because remember. With the cold thermogenesis is a daily practice. Well, it's not daily. It's three times a week, but I do three of those cold water baths for 15 minutes a week. And with that and with wearing less outerwear when I go outside, um, the, you know, we're built to be in cold. We're built to be in heat. We're, you know, our mitochondria really, especially us Northern European descent, we really need um, that cold shock. We need to have the cold shock protein go and all of the good stuff with that. So laughter yoga is another thing that is awesome. Uh, you know, it's free. You can do it on Zoom. It's best to do it in person because then you're sharing the biophoton field yeah. with everybody else. You know, um, well, laughter yoga is just a hoot. It's so, it's so good for all, you know, the dopamine and all those happy chemicals. It's, it's essentially um, kindergarten for adults. Okay. Laughter yoga. You're I, I, I've never done it, but uh, I mean, I definitely know the value of laughter. You know, I was writing a, a blog post recently. I haven't, haven't posted it yet, 
but it was about one of the first jobs I had. And it was kind of like the boiler room of recruiting. Some guy, he wasn't on the phone when he was supposed to be. They, they literally taped the phone to his hand to make an example of him. And uh-huh. you know, if you didn't hit your quota three times, if you missed your quota three times during the week, you just got fired on the spot. But you and, got a toaster if you sold the most. No one got a toaster, but uh, <laughs> but I was just thinking back to this time, and I'm just like, how, how did I survive this? And, and I I became good friends with this guy I worked with, and we pretty much would just make fun of the absurdity of it all, and we would just laughed about all the stupid shit we had to deal with, and it, it got us through it. So if you can learn to to laugh at non life threatening things. It's such a huge benefit for your life, and, and you can get through pretty much anything with, with laughter. So You speak the truth, my friend. Um, another thing are, is sound therapy, so sound baths. and um, Talking about know, like, the, like the, the sound bowls? You, that's got, part like, of it. Yeah. it. It can involve wind instruments. It okay. can involve other percussion instruments. There's this Eileen McCusick gal with the oh, yeah, the sonic slider tuning. Um, there's um, uh, Kathy Yao, Y-E-O, it heals people with sound. Um, you know, anecdotally, she's got these incredible examples of healing with her sound method. Um, so geopathic stress is something to be aware of. Like, let's say your meter doesn't really show you uh, on the meter what's going on in your house, but you know it's not right, okay? So there's a whole, um, you know, there's dousing, how they douse for water. It's it's actually a similar method, but it reveals geopathic stress. So uh, there could be something in the land where your house is that's, you know, not supporting you energetically. And so there are, practitioners of geopathic stress relief. And I actually had had one, you know. Uh, did did work... you work with Rachel? Rachel yes. Chevalier? Rachel Chevalier. Chevalier, yeah. Rachel Chevalier, yeah. I actually have to have her do it to my new house. Would you, so she did your house. Did you feel a shift? Like, what did she yes. find? Well, she, first of all, she said, we it's little stuff, okay? You don't have anything major. Because I think, uh, just with the feng shui practitioners, there are certain buildings or certain sites that just no human should live there, right? Yeah. So, so what is it? Is it called like ley lines in the earth? Ley lines are part of it, um, definitely. Uh, so it's like the electromagnetic stuff that goes on above the ground. There's similar stuff going on under the ground. And these people are trained how to uh, be aware of that and make... Um, make modifications for it. The medical intuitive guy, he also does, um, I guess you could call it a clearing, an energy clearing of a house. So every house I've ever owned, um, as an adult, um, he has he has done his clearing and um, the energy is just like, you feel like you walk into a spa, you know? Um, it's awesome. So, and then the Feldenkrais, uh, this guy, Moshe Feldenkrais, he worked on the Manhattan Project. And he um, developed a method. So, for instance, let's say there was a kid with cerebral palsy and they were completely locked into some position that didn't support them. Yeah. He could spend he could spend two hours with that kid, and the kid is all all that's freed up really wow he, he just had an incredible method um and so once a week i do a zoom for an hour with a guy who was trained by moshi feldenkrais and okay. um it's it's um it essentially works on the neural pathways uh so neuroplasticity um this guy kind of from the from the physicality aspect of how the how the body moves, he kind of invented the first neuro neuroplasticity model okay. for, how the, for how the body can be 
rechannel. Um, and if you want to Google something cool, Google the homunculus of the of the sense sensation, um, the homunculus of the nervous uh, sensory system, um, okay. which depicts. So you think about it. Lips have a whole lot of nerve endings, right? So on the homunculus, the lips are like the biggest part of the head. So it's depicting, you know, uh, it, it's a cool thing. So um, Feldenkrais, uh, there's a lady named Veda Austin who kind of came in the footsteps of um, Dr. Emoto, the great Japanese water researcher. So yeah. Veda Austin, her dad uh, is a Maori from New Zealand, and um, they have an incredible awareness of water and the consciousness of water. And this lady's work is brilliant. And I've known about for years, there's a benefit to bringing an energetic blessing to food that I eat or liquid that I drink. And this lady, she explains how it works and why it works. And anybody that sees uh, you know, her work, I think, will be affected by it. Yeah, by it. all right. Well, you, you've given me a lot of things to uh, think about, to look into. And it goes back to kind of what we first started talking about, the importance of the quality of your thoughts, because we're two-thirds water. Water has this amazing memory and this ability to pick up different energies. And we've probably talked about, I don't know, 20 different kinds of energy, right? Between EMFs, non-native EMF, the you know energy that's emitted from the earth, and how our body reacts to all these different forms of energy. And, and your brain is emitting energy too. That influences the water in your body. So really important to, to develop that awareness and that mindfulness of what you're thinking moment to moment, what you're feeling. Because your body's recording that. You're, you're, the water in your body is, is, uh, has a memory of that, right? Totally. And, and you, you bring up a good point in terms of um, kind of uh, maintaining good energetic hygiene. So I, I work with an image where I put an eight foot tall, eight foot wide. So an eight foot cube of an angelic energy I envision all around myself. Okay. This and it's not just to protect me from whatever's coming in energetically. It's also protecting the people around me from anything that might be kind of toxic to them. Because I recognize, hey, I'm not, I'm not a you. perfect energetic being, right? So this eight-foot angelic cube of light um, affirmations. Um, and I'm pretty sure you work with people around affirmations. And I put together for myself at the beginning of our work together, what I call an ideal scene or a vision board or, you know, I, I captured in words how I wanted to experience myself inside my body as a re result of this 12-week program. And darned if it didn't mostly come true. Uh, so um, there's, you know, intentionality. It's not just it's not just trying to control thoughts because I'm going to have thoughts come through my consciousness. Who knows where they source, right? Because we're all connected. So I'm not going to try to hold on to and analyze why that thought came in. I'm not going to try to push that thought down. I'm not going to try to say that's a bad thought. I'm just going to let it play through. And you're like, wow, that's kind of interesting. And then I can return to here's my vision. Today, I'm deeply listening to my wife. Mm. And we're having a, a deeper connection. Yeah. Today, I'm reveling in the sunshine. Today, I'm sharing. So this is the big, the big thing. My takeaway from all of this is if I create this wellness and this grace and wonder, wonderment inside of myself, I need to share it. If I don't share it, it's a little bit on 
fallow ground. Because I'm kind of looking at if, if I'm at a point in my curriculum where God says, hey, you're doing a pretty good job managing who you are. So why don't you give some of that out? Why don't you share that? Um, and then I'm moving into a place of, um, it's almost like a victory lap, you know, in life. Uh, fulfilling a lot of the original curriculum. And then, you know, the kind of the, my, my wisdom panel, you know, uh, in, in the, in the ethers is saying, okay, you know, you kind of pass those tests. Um, how about, you know, taking on this, how about trying this, which is like a really positive, um, creation. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think it's it's very important for most of us to realize you never get there, right? You set goals for yourself, you achieve those goals, and then it's like what you were just saying, okay, what what's next? And God or your spirit guide or whomever, they're always challenging you so you can grow, so you can improve. And you actually, you started a, a Facebook group to share what you learned about quantum biology and, and being a mitochondriac in light. What's the name of that Facebook group? It's called Our Thriving Mitochondria. And I created it from a very selfish place of, I just wanted to be part of some kind of community. You know? It's called Our Thriving Mitochondria? Was there a Our different name thriving. before? Our Thriving Mitochondria. It used, used to be called something different, I forget. But okay. Yeah, like positive mitochondria or something. So. Yeah, so if you're active on Facebook, check out our thriving mitochondria. You gotta be very positive and just share and, and help other people grow in their journey. But Peter shared a lot of great information. He does a great job of breaking down more complex com uh, complex ideas and different things around quantum biology, which for some of us, it's can be a little bit unapproachable when we hear it at the technical level. But when you kind of break it down and just give the application and what to do, it's it's very simple for the most part. They're not always easy because we have to make some changes in our lives and the way we do things. And we just got to do it one step at a time. Peter just shared tons of different things he's that he's done. That didn't happen overnight. This is something he's been working on for, for many decades, and he's added this and that over, over the years to really kind of build on all the positive things that he's learned along the way. Well, all I can say is you're my friend, you're, you're inspiring to me. Um, and you, you really assist a lot of people to transform their lives. Um, and you certainly helped me with that. And, um, so I, I just ask for many continued blessings on, on your, work and expression in the world, Nathan. Well, thank you so much, Peter. I appreciate that. I've learned a lot from you. And every time we talk, you give me new things to think about. So another thing that's really important today, especially coming out of, of COVID, is our connections with other humans, helping other humans and, and being helped by other humans as well. We need to have that willingness to ask for help when we need it in, in certain areas and just know that, you know, when you, when you receive help, you have the ability to, to give help to others. So it's, it's a, a give and take ex exchange of energy. Yeah, that's beautifully said. And um, that's really important. The part about, you know, sometimes it takes a little bit of courage to reach out and ask somebody else. And the worst that could happen is they just say, I'm too busy, no, you know, whatever, or or they ghost you or whatever it is. But okay, that was one effort. And so that courage, you know, it comes from the French word for heart. So it's connecting into um, the heart energy. And that's another thing that I've been very fortunate to do is do a lot of a lot of work around balancing the chakras, the the energy centers of the body. So that's a whole nother you know, topic. Um, but yes, connecting with other people is really important and not just, you know, being on digital all the time. And I think Dr. Jack Cruz talks about that. Like you got to have some in real life friends, 
You know, you, it can't just all be the digital world. You need, you know, your team, whether it's five other people, whatever it is. Um, I reached out to five of my friends, um, I guess about a year ago. And I said, you know, if I had something really important to share with you, would you be willing to talk to me about it? Um, even if it was uncomfortable or even if it was ugly or, you know, whatever it was. And they all just chime right back. Yes, yes, yes. We have your back. Um, and I actually haven't had to have that kind of conversation with any of them, but it was like, just like, let me, let me, you know, let me be in support of myself. With this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's a skill set most of us could use some work on is being able to have those difficult conversations, finding, you know, a common ground and just accepting our differences when we don't agree on things. And there's so much not to agree on today, but there's also a ton to to agree on and, and to come together on. So it's important to seek that out and uh, just continue our journey and always be asking, you know, what's what's next on my agenda to, to learn and you know what it's if you don't ask it's going to be shown right in my face anyway yeah well, you, you <laughs> here's pop, the next thing you get a pop quiz and lots of times those aren't fun right <laughs> all right peter hey well it's it's been great chatting with you thank you so much any closing words that you want to share any uh words of wisdom uh just be patient with yourself and be very loving with yourself you know, there's really no, no such thing as a as an error or a mistake. It's all just um, part of the learning. Beautiful. All right, Peter. Thank you, and we'll see you soon. Bye thank you, tonight. my friend. This has been the Quantum Biology Collective podcast. To find a practitioner who practices from this point of view visit our directory at quantumbiologycollective.org. If you are a practitioner, definitely take a look at the Applied Quantum Biology Certification, a six-week study of the science of the new human health paradigm and its practical application with your patients and clients. We also love to feature graduates of the program on this very podcast. Until next time, the QBC.